Peptones, or protein hydrolysates, offer many benefits to bioproduction applications. From gene therapy to vaccine development, these benefits include achieving desired protein quality, increasing tighter yields, and exhibiting anti-apoptotic effects. Peptones have diverse nutritional profiles that provide a rich source of amino acids, peptides, carbohydrates, and other components. The versatility of peptones enables them to be used with a wide variety of cell types. Their unique nutritional profiles can support a cell line's distinct nutritional requirements and key drivers of your bioproduction process. Adding the right peptone to your growth media can dramatically improve the culture environment to achieve production goals. But selecting the optimal peptone comes with several considerations that are based on cell type and bioproduction application and that include a peptone screening process. When choosing peptones for fermentation applications, consider the amino acid profile, the degree of hydrolysis, and the carbohydrate content to match the nutritional needs of the microorganism. Also, when selecting peptones for human therapeutics, your first selection criteria may be to use an ultra-filtered peptone for lower endotoxin levels. When considering peptones for both mammalian and microbial cultures, it is important to screen a wide variety of peptones from multiple sources as well as products from the same source since they will all have different nutritional profiles. Screening of peptones enables you to find the ideal profile to complement your cell line and media to achieve your production goals. To help simplify the peptone screening process, Thermo Fisher Scientific offers Gibco Peptone Starter Packs, which are ready to test sample packs of commonly used peptones for specific applications, including the production of monoclonal antibodies, recombinant proteins, and vaccines for both human and animal health applications. Once you have a selection of peptones you would like to test with your culture, you can begin the screening process through a titration study to determine which peptone meets your production goals. Let's walk through an example of titration protocol for mammalian cell culture using starter pack number three. Rehydrate each peptone in your starter pack to 100 grams per liter as recommended for mammalian culture. you will screen each peptone at four concentrations. Also include your current medium as a control. Note, cultures should be supplemented with glucose, L-glutamine, and any other cell line-specific supplements as required. Prepare each cell culture according to standard seeding protocols. Prepare seeding cell suspension by resuspending the cell pellet in base medium. On days 0, 3, 5, 7, 10, and the last day of cell culture, Determine viable cell density and percent viability. Protein titer should also be monitored and recorded throughout the culture. Adjust glucose and glutamine levels as appropriate for the base medium throughout the experiment. The three top performing peptones selected from the titration studies can be mixed to further optimize performance. Once you have identified which peptone yields the desired outcome, you may consider optimizing your feed strategy by testing different concentrations added on various days. Timing of the feed can impact product titer. This graph shows a peptone added at multiple feed concentrations, 1 gram per liter, 3 grams per liter, and 7 grams per liter at day 3 and day 5. The optimal concentration is 3 grams per liter of the peptone, fed at day 5 and collected at day 14. If these different feed time points are not investigated, approximately 20% of productivity would have been lost when comparing day 3 to day 5 feeds. In summary, Choosing the optimal peptone is not always a simple process, but taking the time to screen multiple peptones to find the ideal supplementation strategy for your culture could offer great improvement to your bioproduction process.